Hey friends, Miss Laura here with the South Carolina State Museum. Thank you so much for joining us for this month's Crafty Jammy. This month's character is Madeline and we will be learning how to make a 3D pumpkin just like this one. If you've never been with us for Crafty Jammies before, it's when we do a little craft in our jammies and supposedly head to bed right afterward. We do these in three sections. First, we learn how to make the craft. Second, we read the story with our storybook character. And third, we'll read the story again, but this time a focus on the book so that you can follow along. We do these the second Tuesday of every month live and then put a recording up afterward. Thanks so much for joining us. We hope you have a fun time. And now let's learn how to make a 3D pumpkin. Hey everybody, Miss Laura here with the South Carolina State Museum. I'm here to show you how to make a 3D pumpkin, just like this. Now, whenever we do something like this for Accessibility Night, we try to keep it very simple and we try to avoid glue or anything too sticky if we can. So we're, we did make this with all tape, but you can glue it if you need to. So let's check it out and see what you need to get started. So the very first thing you are going to need is paper. We need some paper. Now I already have orange strips of paper cut um, and I just cut them out of card, orange cardstock that I had laying around. And then if you want to give your pumpkin a, a leaf, you're going to need some green paper. And if you want to give it a stem, you are going to need some brown paper. Now, I happened to not have brown paper, but I did have white paper and a brown crayon. So I went ahead and just colored a little strip of brown right there. And you can do the same thing for the rest of it. If you don't have orange, if you don't have green, if you have plain white paper, you can make this happen. The other thing you're going to need, and I'm gonna steal it from my other one really quick, is a paper towel or toilet paper tube or just a craft tube because you're going to need to provide some support to your pumpkin. And let me show you what I mean. If I take out the tube from this pumpkin, it gets a little squishy. It's actually really fun because it bounces a lot. So you do not have to have one. It's okay if you don't have one of these little tubes. It's absolutely fine, but it'll provide some support for your little pumpkin from bouncing around a little too much, even though I think that's really fun. So you're going to need a tube as well, okay? The first thing I do is I start working on building my pumpkin, which means you need to cut several strips of paper. You can make a very short, small pumpkin if you cut like this, or you can make a taller pumpkin if you cut like this. This pumpkin that you see me have here, this is made with long strips. So cut vertically like that. So through the magic of presentation, I already have some strips pre-cut, so I'm going to move this off to the side. I'm going to move this up, and I'm going to show you how to put it together with my tape. So the very first thing I did was I just kind of started making a star formation out of them. And I taped them together every time just to kind of keep things a little simpler. So I make a little plus right here, and I put a little tape down to keep those together. Then I'm going to add another strip like this and I'm going to tape that down as well. And you're going to keep going around as many times as you want to. Now you can keep it pretty simple and that's what we're going to do here. We're going to make a very simple one and tape that one down. So this only took one, two, three strips to make this particular pumpkin. And this one is a little bit smaller than my other one. So what I'm going to do now is fold these or round them just like this and bring them up into a circular shape. And again, I'm just gonna tape them down or tape them together. Just do a little bit of an overhang like that and tape them together. And you have, the thicker the paper you use, the more your um, pumpkin base is going to be able to stand and you might not need that craft tube after all. There we go. And so now that I have my first loop, I'm just going to start taping the other ones to the center and looping them around. I like to start with the crossbars first, 
just to kind of give it more rigidity and the ability for it to stand on its own a little bit more. And then I'll do the alternate ones after that. So I'm going to tape these down. So these are the ones that were, oops, these are the ones that were opposite of each other. I did those first. Now I'm going to do the extra ones that came from the side. Here's one right here. Okay. And like I said, you can use glue if you have it. It might just take you a little bit longer to finish it out and get it done because glue takes a little time to dry. But if you don't have tape, it's okay. That's what we call getting creative and trying to figure out how to make it work. And that's always great. Whenever you troubleshoot, that's always awesome. And let's do our last little bit right here. There we go. Yay! Perfect. Now what I happened to use this time was cardstock. So this one actually stays up pretty well on its own. I don't have to do a whole lot. If I look at the front view, you see right here, this one is not quite as bouncy as this one. Now this is just orange computer paper, really thin paper. This one is orange cardstock, which is a little bit thicker than construction paper. So that's the other option you have. So you can experiment and play with different types of paper to see what kind of pumpkin they give you and how rigid it is. These I also made slightly differently, and I'll show you how I made this to make it an even bigger pumpkin, okay? But this is kind of just a little mini pumpkin that I've got going on here. Let me show you how to make the stem and the leaf. So I don't really need this craft paper tube for this one because my paper is so nice and sturdy, so I'm going to put it over here off to the side. Now, in order to make my stem, and my stem I want it to be brown, but remember, you can make yours any color. You don't have to have an orange pumpkin. You can have a purple or a pink one. And then you just kind of make whatever colors you want from anything else. So I wanted a brown stem. And if you look at the one that I've made here, I've got it kind of swirling around itself a little bit. Okay, and there's this very simple way I did that. I took some brown paper, and again, I don't have brown, so I just colored some white paper with my brown crayon on each side. And I only need a little strip, so I didn't do a whole lot. And I'm not gonna cut it straight across like that. I'm going to cut it down at an angle. And that's going to give me the swirl that you see at the very top. So look at that angle that I just cut, okay? It's like a big old hill. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll the wide end in and let the smaller end stay on the outside. So I'm just gonna roll it around like that. Now if I'm not flattening it, you can still see it's hollow on the inside. I'm just gonna roll it around and as I do that, I'm going to start getting layers to it. And at the very end, I will just tape it down. Now, if you make yours this small and you're like, oh man, I want something bigger, just loosen it up a little bit like this, untwist it, and you'll start to get a bigger stem. Okay? If you want it smaller, just tighten it up a little bit. So don't worry about taping it until you've got it the size that you want it to be. So there we go, I'm just gonna tape it right there. I'm just gonna tape the end down. Ta-da! And now the very last thing I need to do is make my leaf. Now if you've ever done anything with me before, you know I tend to freehand a lot of stuff, but if you're not a freehand person, you can absolutely draw yours out. A leaf is pretty simple in shape. You kind of do a little swoopy thing like this, okay? I've got a little swoop just like this. I'll make it a little darker so you can see better on camera. So I've got a little kind of backward S shape, so just a swoop. And then you curve down and around like that. There you go. And you can add a little bit more, give a little bit more character if you want to, like that. All right, and then we're gonna cut out our leaf and we are going to tape it to our pumpkin. If you don't like anything and you're using tape, guess what? It is not too difficult to simply grab the tape and untape it if you need to. Very, very simple. Lots of ways to make this happen. You can use lots of different types of paper and come up with lots of different pumpkins. If you do not want to make the stem, you don't have to. You can simply put your leaf on just like that. 
If you don't want to make the leaf and you only want the stem, you are welcome to do that as well. This is your pumpkin and you are welcome to make it any way you want. So now we have the three major parts of my pumpkin. We have the pumpkin here, we have the stem, and we have my little leaf. So now all we have to do is tape everything onto the pumpkin or glue it or adhere it any way you are going to. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put a little bit on my stem like that and kind of create a little tab down here and then put that on my pumpkin wherever I want it. Get my finger through this little hole right here and press down, add a little bit of pressure. I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. Kind of create a little tab on the outside and stand it up and have it sit on my pumpkin as I want it to. Now the plus side, if you're one of the folks using glue, is that you don't see all the tape, which is kind of, it makes it a little bit prettier. But on the plus side, if you are using tape, it goes a little bit faster. So now all I gotta do is add my leaf, and I think I want my leaf right here. So I'm gonna kind of eyeball it and place it right where I want it, and then I'm just going to stick some tape down and get it to stay. Ta-da! Now I have a little bitty pumpkin made out of paper, and that's it. So this is cardstock, which is why it's so firm and it's holding its shape really well. Um, this is just construction paper, and it's white construction paper that I colored brown because I didn't have any brown. And this is green construction paper. I drew out the shape of my leaf and cut it out. So that is one option. The other thing you can do is just use regular paper, but like I said, you're gonna have to give it some sort of um, rigidity in the center. So what we did is we took a craft tube or a toilet paper tube or something like that, and we taped it in the middle. And when you do that, it kind of gives some um, rigidity, to, it gives it a center pole so that it stands up really nice and straight and tall, and it's not bouncing anymore. However, if you think it's just really funny to have a bouncing pumpkin, you are welcome to have a silly, goopy, bouncing pumpkin. Let me show you a really quick way to make your pumpkin a whole lot bigger and a little bit more like this size, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our strips of orange, but instead of just crossing them like this, what we're going to do is make them very long and tape them together like that and make very, very long strips, okay? Very, very long strip. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna put one on top and I'm gonna put another one pointing down. So what I've done is I've just doubled the size of my pumpkin. And that's how you get the really big, big pumpkin that I had before. Here's the catch to this. When we made this little pumpkin, all we did was we stuck these here and these here. We can't do that this time. There's not going to be enough um, uh, to stabilize it. So what we have to do this time is we have to add even more. So I would add these two right here and I would add these two right here just like I did before. But in addition to doing that, I would also put one here, 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 I'll need this tape, here, and here. So you can see what I'm talking about. I have to add another layer to it if I'm going to space it out like that. Now, of course you don't have to, you can always experiment with it and see what you can do. But this is essentially what you're going to do. You're gonna tape all of those down and you're gonna have this big old giant wheel going on. And you're going to do the exact same thing we did before. You're going to fold all of them up and attach them in the middle, just like we did here. So it's just a bigger version. Same thing with the stem, same thing with the leaf. You're just going to figure out what shape you want, cut it out and put it together. So that is how you make a pumpkin more of this size, a really, really big pumpkin. Even with um, the, the cardstock, when a pumpkin starts to get that big, you might still need something in the middle of it to help it hold up, but those are your two options. That's kind of how they work. Again, two different types of paper, two different styles of pumpkin, a little small one, a really big one. Experiment, see what you come up with, and let us see it. Make sure you post it, tag us in it. We love to see what you're doing, and we can't see what you do for the holidays as well. Hey friends, now we're going to hear from Miss Ava, one of our educators here at the State Museum, as she reads Madeline with our friend, Madeline. Madeline by Ludwig Bemelmans. In an old house in Paris that was covered in vines, 
lived twelve little girls in two straight lines. In two straight lines, they broke their bread and brushed their teeth and went to bed. They smiled at the good and frowned at the bad. And sometimes they were very sad. They left the house at half past nine in two straight lines. In rain or shine, the smallest one was Madeline. She was not afraid of mice. She, she loved winter, snow and ice. To the tiger in the zoo, Madeline just said, poo poo. And nobody knew so well how to frighten Miss Cavell. In the middle of one night, Miss Cavell turned on her light and said, something is not right. Little Madeline sat in bed, cried and cried, her eyes were red. And soon after Dr. Cohn came, he rushed out to the phone. And he dialed Dan Tong 10 6. Nurse, he says, it's an appendix. Everybody had to cry. Not a single eye was dry. Madeline was in his arm, in a blanket safe and warm. In a car with a red light, they drove out into the night. Madeline woke up two hours later in a room with flowers. <gasps> oh. Madeline soon ate and drank. On her bed, there was a crank. And a crack on the ceiling had a habit of sometimes looking like a rabbit. Outside were birds, trees, and sky. And so ten days passed quickly by. One nice morning, Miss Clavel said, Isn't this a fine day to visit Madeline? Visitors from two to four, read a sign outside her door. Tiptoeing with solemn faces, with some flowers and a vase. In they walked and they said, ah, when they saw the toys and candy and the dollhouse from Papa. But the biggest surprise by far, on her stomach, there was a scar. Goodbye, they said. We'll come again, and the little girls left in the rain. They went home and broke their bread, brushed their teeth, and went to bed. In the middle of the night, Miss Clavel turned on the light and said, something is not right. And afraid of a disaster, Miss Clavel ran fast and faster. And she said, please, children, do tell me what is troubling you. And all the little girls cried, boo-hoo. We want to have our appendix out, too. Good night, little girls. Thank the Lord you are well. And now go to sleep, said Miss Clavel. And she turned out the light and closed the door. And that's all there is. There isn't any more. Bye, everyone. Bye, Madeline. Thanks for visiting us. Madeline by Ludwig Bemelmans.
in an old house in Paris, all covered with vines, lived 12 little girls in two straight lines. In two straight lines, they broke their bread and brushed their teeth and went to bed. They smiled at the good and frowned at the bad. And sometimes they were very sad. They left the house at half past nine in two straight lines. In rain or shine, The smallest one was Madeline. She was not afraid of mice. She loved winter, snow, and ice. To the tiger in the zoo, Madeline just said, poo poo. And nobody knew so well how to frighten Miss Clavel. In the middle of one night, Miss Clavel turned on her light and said, Something is not right. Little Madeline sat in bed, cried and cried. Her eyes were red. And soon after, Dr. Cohn came, he rushed out to the phone. And he dialed, then ton ten six, nurse, he said, it's an appendix. Everybody had to cry, not a single eye was dry. Madeline was in his arm, in a blanket, safe and warm. In a car with a red light, they drove out into the night. Madeline woke up two hours later in a room with flowers. Madeline soon ate and drank. On her bed, there was a crank. And a crack on the ceiling had the habit something like a rabbit. Outside were birds, trees, and sky, and so ten days passed quickly by. One nice morning, Miss Clavel said, Is it this a fine? Day to visit. Madeline. Visitors from two to four, read a sign outside her door. Tiptoeing with solemn face, with some flowers and a vase. In they walked and then said, ah, when they saw the toys and candy and the dollhouse from Papa. But the biggest surprise by far, on her stomach was a scar. Goodbye, they said, we'll come again and the little girls left in the rain. They went home and broke their bread, brushed their teeth, and went to bed.
In the middle of the night, Miss Clavel turned on the light and said, something is not right. And afraid of disaster, Miss Clavel ran fast and faster. And she said, Please, children, do tell me what is troubling you. And all the little girls cried, Boo-hoo! We want to have our appendix out too. Good night, little girls. Thank the Lord you are well. And now go to sleep, said Miss Clavel. And she turned out the light and closed the door. And that's all there is. There isn't any more. That's going to do it for us in this month's Crafty Jammy. Thanks so much for joining us. We hope you had a good time. We'll do this again the second Tuesday of next month as well. Different character, different craft. Thanks so much for joining us. Be sure you tag us in anything you make or do. We miss you a whole lot, and we can't wait to see you here again at the South Carolina State Museum. Bye!